everyone, welcome to the Oakley Roots YouTube channel. In today's tutorial, we're gonna get cozy and we're gonna make the cutest little bag that is absolutely perfect for anybody who is starting to learn how to sew zippers. Today, we're gonna make the zippy, because it has so many zippers, and this pattern comes to us from Sally Tomato. Now, this is also the pattern and all the material that comes in this month's Sally Tomato Oakley Roots Mystery Monthly Bag Box. <laughs> this is what you're gonna be making. So you'll have everything you need to make this version, including that adorable little hardware on the back. But if you're not subscribed to the box, that's perfectly fine. This is a fantastic pattern for beginners, experienced sewers who just wanna whip something out really fast, but a really useful bag and any sort of like scrappy project you're wanting to use. This is a perfect scrap project. So let's walk through this bag. You can see the front of the bag, we have two zip pockets and then a base. So these are just two simple zip slip pockets, nothing complicated about it. On the back, we have one zip pocket, which of course we all know I love a back zip pocket. Also on the back is where I'm adding this incredible little bag hardware. Now you don't have to use this hardware. You can definitely use a D-ring. I made another bag with D-rings. I'll show you that in just a moment. Even if you are using the monthly kit, the monthly kit includes both this hardware and D-rings. So you can choose either one of those. And then on the top of the bag, we have another zipper with just the main part of the body. So no card slot pockets, no recessed zippers in the lining. This is a perfect beginner bag because it does let you really practice. I mean, you're doing one, two, three, four, four zippers, but none of them are challenging. You're gonna learn how to sew the zippers into the seams. You're also gonna learn how to use zipper tabs so that you don't have to have the zipper in the seam on the top, which gives it a really nice finish. If you're using the box, we're once again using that adorable half inch green webbing, but you can definitely make your own strap if you'd like using cork or quilt cotton, whatever you'd like. But yeah, I think this is just such a fun little bag to play with. It is one of Sally Tomato's more popular patterns. I see the zippy all over the place. It is definitely one of those bags where like, if you have a craft fair coming on, you're gonna make a lot of these to sell at the craft market because they just, they look so cute, they're so easy, and I, I would believe these would sell pretty well because of the usefulness of the size and the design. So for the December box, I wanted to go with something a little bit more clean and neutral as we go into January, but still wintry, but florally. I, you know me, I'm always trying to figure out a way to kind of like please the masses. It makes it neutral and calm and pleasant, but also a little colorful and funky like me. So that's where all the material for this comes from. Remember, even if you are in the box, you can replace any of these things with your own material and then use some of the fabric for a future project. So this is the one we'll be making in the video today, but I did want to show you the bag that I tested out first. This one is a little bit more funky. <laughs> So here's another version of the zippy. I did some fun vinyl down here. I do encourage you to use vinyl or cork, maybe faux leather on the bottom part, just because that's kind of the part that takes more of a beating. But you can definitely use quilt cotton on the top part of this. And I really love the like contrast. Um, and you can see for this one, it's like, it's like, you know, stormtroopers, Star Wars theme, but then like nice, pleasant little flowers on the top, which I think, I think is fun. I think you could have a lot of fun with how you place your material on this bag. So if you're new to the Oak Lords YouTube channel, please consider clicking subscribe down below. If at any point you like this video, please give it a like. Any questions, comments, shout outs, anything at all, leave them down in the comment section. We will have timestamps as always for every step of this bag. So if there's one part you're looking for, go ahead and check down in the description. I believe there's like a little arrow over here you can click. Expand that description, timestamps will be there. That's also where you're gonna find links for everything we're using today. The box for this month is currently sold out, but if you would like to join the monthly mystery box with Oak Lords and Sally Tomato, I'll have a link down there and then if you sign up now you'll be into January's box. All right guys let's get started. So for this bag you're going to need about a half a yard of material maybe a little less a little more depending on how wide your fabric is. Um, I'm going to be mixing it up too. I'm going to use some quilt cotton as well as some cork. If you have the monthly subscription kit then you already have enough of each of these materials for the bag we're making today. But for the top of the bag, I'll be using some quilt cotton, so I actually need a very, very small amount of that. And then for the bottom of the bag, I'm gonna be using cork. Again, even though we're making the larger size of the zippy, it requires very little material. So this is a great scrappy project. For the lining, you're gonna need about a half a yard of material. I will be using quilt cotton today, and I would say you do not have to interface any of the lining. I know, I, I know, I never say that about quilt cotton, but I'm telling you, I've made two of these already. Both times I used quilt cotton, that's it for the lining, no interfacing, and they've been fantastic. So for those of you guys who wanna make it really easy to sew this together without having a lot of thickness, 
just use quilt cotton, no interfacing. Of course, water resistant canvas is also a fantastic option because it is lightweight, thin, and also does not require interfacing. Having about a half a yard of fusible woven interfacing is also great. I will be using the interfacing on the exterior quilt cotton, so I do recommend any exterior material that is quilt cotton should be interfaced with woven interfacing. I'm also going to use it on just a couple panels in the lining um, just to see how that affects the thickness in the seams today. But I do want to remind you that on the previous two bags, I did not use any woven interfacing on the lining and it was a very, very smooth and easy bag to put together. No bulky seams. So this pattern is called the zippy bag because it has a lot of zippers. There are four zippers. So for any of you guys just getting started out practicing your zippers, this is the bag for you. You're going to love it. You're going to be a zipper pro. Uh, we have four zippers here. Each of these is cut to 12 inches long. This is just a plastic zipper teeth. So it looks like metal, but it's not. It's plastic. We can sew over it. However, the zipper pulls are metal. You cannot sew over those. Please don't try. For the strap, we're going to have half inch webbing again. You can make your own strap with material if you'd like, but having this half inch webbing is just, it's just very, very easy and quick. Um, there's lots of places to get different colorful ones too if you're looking for that. So I'll have those linked down below. For the strap hardware, you will need two half inch swivel hooks and then a half inch slider for making it an adjustable strap. And then for connecting it to the bag, you have a couple different options if you have the box today. Uh, you can use the D-rings. There are D-rings and you can just insert them into the side of the bag, which works great. Or you can try these adorable little nuggets here. They're so cute. These are like little screw on details. Now let me show you a closer look. So here's a bag I've already made. And do you see how pretty that is? I love this detailing. So we do screw this on to the exterior. I'm going to give you some tips to kind of beef it up to make sure it doesn't rip anything. Uh, but, but this is a beautiful little accent. However, if you're like, I don't know about that and you have the box this month, just save these, put them to the side, save them for another project. Use the D-rings. The D-rings are also great and you can install them on the top or on the sides of the bag, wherever you'd like. So here's all the other stuff today. The thread I'm going to be using is a Tex 45 weight thread. This is a thicker thread. I definitely would not use this in the bobbin of my domestic machine. Um, and even on some domestic machines, it might be too thick for the top needle. So a Tex 35 thread is also great. Honestly, any polyester thread is fantastic for bag making. It's very durable. For the bobbin, I'm just gonna be using Guterman thread. This comes from Joann's. It's also polyester thread. My needle today is just my go-to standard Microtex 8012 needle. I can make pretty much any bag. Uh, regardless if it's quilt cotton or faux leather or vinyl or cork, um, 8012 usually works fantastic. I have a one inch by six inch ruler as always. A marking tool, this is just an air racing marking tool. My stiletto and little press here is really handy today, especially with the quilt cotton. I always have a lighter to clean up any little loose threads. This is just an extra thread and I'm not using it for the thread part, I'm actually using it for the rounded part down here because I'll show you, we, we round the bottom of the zippy. Uh, you could use any of these, honestly. You just need something round and you're gonna use it for all four corners. And then I have some double-sided tape here. If you need this for the zippers, that's really helpful. Um, I usually use it for my bag tag which is right here. This is the bag tag I'm using today. This is a sew on cork bag tag that's printed and it's beautiful and it's from Heartwood and Hyde. I'll have a link down below. And then this right here is really for installation of the special strap connectors. So I have a screwdriver set because there are tiny screws. So a magnetic screwdriver set is really ideal here because it is easy to lose those tiny screws. This makes it easier. Uh, Beacon three in one glue. I like to set my screws in glue to make sure they don't go anywhere. I have a hole punch just to make it a little bit easier. Uh, you could also just just use, you know, a stiletto, some very tiny scissors, something like that. So you don't need a hole punch. However, if you plan on making a lot of bags, I do recommend you get yourself a good hand hole punch. You'll just find that you'll use it a lot. It just makes things easier. And the tool I always forget, but use the most of a healthy supply of these plastic clover clips. These are going to be, these are a necessity in any bag maker's toolbox, in my opinion. So for our pattern pieces, you see I have these three cuts here for the front of the bag and then these two cuts for the back. You can see we're gonna have a lot of zippers going on the front and one zipper on the back. I like to use the cork for the base of the bag because I feel like that's what touches the most surface so it's easiest to clean. So the quilt cotton pieces for the exterior are all interfaced with the woven interfacing already. The cork does not have any interfacing whatsoever. It's just cork. 
I also have a couple of tabs here for the top zipper. These are quilt cotton and I did interface these with the woven interfacing just because I feel like by a zipper when you kind of, if you kind of open it or close it too fast, the material gets a little beaten up. So I like it to be a little bit stronger. And then for the lining, I have two cuts here. I am interfacing both of these with the woven interfacing. I will let you know if that's more challenging to sew. Just again, a heads up, if you feel more comfortable with thinner seams, there's no reason to interface these today. They will be fine left just as quilt cotton. And then finally, I have three pocket cuts, cuts A, B, and C. These are all from the lining material. These are all quilt cotton. I would suggest you mark them A, B, and C just because it is kind of, it's easy to get confused. Yes, I know these are not pressed. Honestly, it's a, it's a zipper pocket panel. I don't think it needs to be pressed. It's gonna be fine. But each of these are left just as is, no interfacing whatsoever. So let's get started with the top main zipper preparation. You're gonna take one of your zippers and cut it down to seven and a half inches. Once you have that cut down, take your little zipper tab ends and fold them in half, wrong sides together, short sides together, just like this. And I just press it with my fingers like that, open it back up, and then I'm gonna take the short raw edges and fold them wrong sides back to meet that center crease just like that, folding both of the short edges in to meet in the center and then fold it again in half like a little hot dog bun and then grab a couple clips and just clip this shut. Just like that, so do this with both zipper tabs. Now what we're gonna do is just hug these over the ends of our zipper tape. So I'm just gonna remove the clips and then I'm just gonna let it kind of nom nom onto the raw edge of our zipper tape, just like that, and then clip it back. So make sure the zipper tape goes all the way into the middle fold. Do this for both edges of your zipper tape. Now we're gonna go top stitch along the inner folded edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Once you have that top stitch, you can grab some scissors and we're just gonna trim off the excess on the left and the right so that the zipper tab matches up perfectly with the zipper tape. So I just kind of like slide my scissors next to the edge of the zipper tape and just trim off the fabric, just like that. So I'm not cutting any of the actual zipper tape. I'm just cutting that quilt cotton tab. There we go, isn't that cute? I, I love these little zippers. So go ahead and put this to the side for now. So now I'm going to build all three of these zipper pockets at the same time. This is just, I like to work in batches like this instead of doing one at a time. Uh, it's up to you, but I, I don't think I need to show you the same thing three times. So we're gonna just do it all at once. So take your A, B, and C lining cuts and then grab your three remaining zippers. So these are the two zippers that go on the front of the bag and the one zipper that goes on the back. And let's just start with piece A. And I always like to keep these nearby because it's very easy to forget which one's which. So take your lining cut of fabric and lay it right side up so that the short edge is up top. Then take your zipper, and I like to pull the zipper pretty far to the left, not, not all the way off or anything, just, you know, about an inch away from it. And then lay your zipper right side up on top of it. So when I lay my zipper like this, it's nice and long. So I like to have the pull just hanging off the edge and I can actually scoot this in a little bit more. You can see it's hanging off on the left and the right, but a lot more on the left. So now grab some clips and line up the top edge of your zipper tape with the top edge of your lining pocket and just clip these together like this. And now I like to take my little label here and I'm just gonna attach it to the end of my zipper because I don't wanna forget that this is piece A. So I'm gonna set that to the side and I'm gonna repeat that for B and C exactly. Zipper right side up, lining right side up, lining up the zipper tape just like I did on piece A. All right, once you have your zippers pinned to their lining panels, let's base them on at a quarter inch seam allowance along all three of these edges. Now's a good time to put the zipper foot on the machine. Okay, so we have all three of our zippers basted on. So once again, just working with A, what we're going to do now is keeping the zipper right side up, fold the zipper tape down so that the zipper is right side up, the bottom short edge of your lining is right side up, and you're just going to line it all up together. So you can see it, it can be easy to kind of whoop, make it go like that. We don't want that. So what I do is I bring it down to the edge and then I flip over my zipper and panel and what I can do is looking from the back of the zipper, I can match up the edges on the side here so that I know that it's squared up. And then I can also match it up with the top edge of my zipper tape here that has not been sewn. I'm gonna do the same thing on the right side, just lining it up over here on the right and then also on the top. And now we can just clip along this edge of the zipper 
with that bottom edge of our lining. There we go. So to visualize this, when it's hanging up like this, this is how it should look. The zipper is right side up. You're looking at the exterior of the lining everywhere because then when you open the zipper, you would see the right side of the lining. So we're gonna lay this like this because we don't wanna sew over this bottom piece. When we sew, we just wanna sew over the two pieces of material. So I'm gonna repeat this for B and C as well. Okay, so I have A, B, and C all ready to go. Now we're just gonna baste along this bottom edge on all three of them at a quarter inch seam allowance. Again, make sure you're pulling the little pouch out of the way as you do this. So your three zipper pockets are now prepped and ready to go. Make sure you keep them labeled, but you can set them to the side because we're gonna work on each one of them one by one. So now we're gonna take pocket A and then your top panel for the front of the bag. So lay pocket A so the zipper is right side up and then the pocket part is going down towards the bottom and the zipper is closing towards the left. So zipper pull closes towards the left. Then grab your top panel and we're going to lay it right side down on the top edge of our zipper tape. So if you have a directional print, think about that now. So I'm just gonna take this and lay it right side down with the zipper and make sure when you flip this up, the left and right edges of your top panel match up with the left and right edges of the lining pocket. And then you can just clip these together. So now we're gonna sew along this top edge at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. So now what we wanna do is take this top front panel and flip it right side up. So the bottom lining panel pocket stays down and you're just flipping only the fabric from the top panel up. You can grab an iron here and iron this if you'd like, or you can use this handy dandy tool here. And you can just kind of press right along the seam and it really helps. Now I'm used to doing this with vinyl a lot, so I don't need this to be perfectly crisp flat before I top stitch it. If it's easier for you, then definitely get out that iron and just give it a good press right along this seam so that it stays down, it's nice and easy to work with. But for me, I can keep it down nice and flat at the machine. So now we're going to top stitch along the bottom edge of this top panel here at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So once you have the top panel top stitched, you can actually remove this label now. We know zipper A is in place. We're gonna flip the zipper pocket up just like that. So now it's behind the top panel. And now grab your middle panel and line it up along the bottom edge of your zipper. Once again, our zipper and top panel are both right side up. Again, look at your directional print. Do you need to switch this around or anything? Get it the way you want it like this first and then just flip that middle panel over like that and line it up on the bottom edge. The sides of the middle panel should match up with the sides of the top panel. So if it's like this, that's no good. You gotta scoot it over, line it up with the sides of the top panel and along the raw edge of your zipper tape and just clip together. So once you have that clip, let's sew along this edge at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Once you have that sewn, go ahead and take that middle panel and fold it back. Remember the pocket is still up behind the top of the zipper. So we're just gonna fold this middle panel back down. You can press it with an iron or just give it a press with your little presser stick here. And now let's top stitch right along that folded edge next to the zipper teeth at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, pocket A is fully attached. Next we're gonna grab pocket B. And when you have pocket B, make sure you have the zipper tape right side up and the zipper closing towards the left. So once again, my label's on the left, so just like this. And what we wanna do now is we wanna attach the top edge of pocket B to the bottom edge of that middle panel. So I like to lay everything out the way I want it to be in the end before it's sewn together. So just like this, top, front, middle, front, B pocket. So I'm just gonna take the whole pocket, not just the zipper tape, but the whole pocket and flip it over so my zipper tape and my middle panel are now right sides together and then I'll flip it up just so I can see the edge of the middle panel and the edge of the pocket for B and make sure they're lined up on the left and right. And then we can just clip these together, right sides together. And if at any point you're having a hard time with the clips, maybe keeping it all together, this is where that double-sided tape is really helpful because you could instead just add tape to the zipper tape and then tape these pieces of material together and it will stay perfectly. You don't have to worry about anything moving around on you. Okay, so this is what I have now. This bigger pocket over here is panel A. This is B, 
right side down and we're gonna sew along this clipped edge at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. So it might be easier to visualize this if you look at the back side. So the back side of the zipper tape for A. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip all of this up because what we wanna do is we want the seam that's on the bottom edge of the middle panel to be behind the middle panel. So what I'm doing is I'm just flipping this up like that so that this middle panel is folded right here. So I'm gonna grab my little pressing tool, just give it a quick press, there we go. And now I'm gonna top stitch along this bottom edge of the middle panel at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. The B pocket should be down, the A pocket should be up. So both of them out of the way. Alrighty, we have B attached. You can remove your tag if you still have one there. And now let's flip the B pocket up just like the A. So that way we just have the zipper tape and we don't have anything hanging beneath it. So now grab your front bottom and lay the top with the zippers right side up and then the front bottom also right side up just like this. So you kind of have an idea of how it's gonna look. If you have a directional print for the bottom, think about that now. And then just take the bottom panel and flip it right side down against those zipper teeth and line it up on the sides with your middle panel and then just clip together along the bottom edge of that second zipper tape. So it's the zipper tape for pocket B. All right, now let's go sew along this bottom edge at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Once you have that done, take that bottom panel and just fold it down. So the seam should be going behind the bottom panel, so behind that cork, and then just give it a press. Uh, if you're using a faux leather, a vinyl, a cork, don't press this one with an iron. So this one you just wanna press with your fingers or a tool like this. And now let's top stitch right along this bottom panel at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Alrighty, so if you put all the pockets down, this is what you have now. Isn't that cool, these little zippers? So before we base down the sides, if you have a bag tag, this is a great time to add it. So if you wanna add it in the middle here, you can. If you wanna add it to the top, you definitely can. Just remember, you do still have to sew on the zipper on the top here, which this can kind of get in the way. I like to add it in the middle of the bottom panel. So I'm gonna, once again, flip all my pockets out of the way. And I can just fold this in half and just pinch, just, just ever so slightly pinch right along the middle. I'm not trying to crease my cork or anything, but I'm gonna use an air racing marker to mark the midpoint on the cork right here. And then I'll grab some double-sided tape and add some double-sided tape to the back of my bag tag. And then I just use my eyeballs here to kind of line it up. There we go. Make sure it's centered. And now I'll just top stitch along all four edges of my bag tag at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So now that that's done, make sure you push down all of your pocket panels. You might wanna iron them down just to make sure they are nice and flat because they can kind of roll up. So I'm gonna take both pocket panels, just press them down like that and flip it over. Just press it down from the front, make sure everything's lined up on the left and the right. I like to add clips to hold all the layers together on the left and right side. And now we're gonna baste along the sides at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. While you're basting, don't forget to move your zippers to the center so that you don't accidentally sew them off the side of the bag. All right, this is how it should look. Just double check to make sure your zippers are inside the bag, they're not hanging off the side. Now you can grab some scissors and trim off the excess zipper tape. So we don't need it anymore. And there we go, front panel is done and it's adorable. Um, we do have to round the bottoms, but I'm gonna wait until we're done with the back panel and then we'll round the bottoms of the back panel, front panel and lining all at the same time. So now we're going to pretty much do a similar thing, just instead of two zippers, we'll attach one zipper for the back panel. So you need the back top panel, the back bottom panel, and then zipper pocket C. So take the back top panel and lay it right side up. If you have a directional print, go ahead and think about that. It needs to be top, bottom. And then take your pocket C, make sure that the zipper goes to the left when closing, and lay it so the zipper teeth are right side up and it's just right underneath the top panel like that. And then we're just gonna flip the top panel down right sides together with the zipper teeth and then fold this up and make sure the edges of the pocket and the edges of the top panel line up on the left and the right. Now let's go sew along this clipped edge at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Once you have it sewn together, flip the top panel up so the seam is behind it, and then just give it a press right along that edge. There you go. And make sure that the C pocket panel is down. And now we're going to top stitch right along that bottom edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now take the pocket lining and flip it up so it's behind the top panel, and the zipper and top panel are right side up. 
and then take your bottom panel. Also lay it right side up just so you can line it up and see how you like it. Make sure everything directional is correct. And then we're going to flip the back panel over so it's right sides together with the zipper. Make sure the edge of the back panel lines up with the edge of the pocket and the front panel. And then just clip it to the unsewn edge of your zipper tape. And now let's go sew along this clipped edge at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Once that's sewn, take the bottom panel and fold it down so the pocket's still up behind the top panel, but the bottom panel goes down and it's going to fold over that seam. So the seam is going to stay behind the bottom panel, which I know it fights you a little bit if you're using a thicker material. Uh, you can give it a press with your pressing tool if you'd like. And now let's top stitch right along this edge of the bottom panel at an eighth of an inch seam allowance, again, keeping the pocket panel out of the way. Once you have it top stitched, take the pocket and just smooth it out so it's down behind the bottom panel now. You can iron this if you'd like to keep it nice and flat. I'm just gonna smooth it with my hands. And now I'm gonna grab some clips and I'm going to clip along the side here to hold the panel and the pocket together. Don't forget to move your zipper pull into the center of the bag like this. And now we're going to baste along both sides at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, now let's trim down the zipper tape so that it's the same size as the panels. There we go. And now the back panel is good. Let's round the corners of our four main panels. Go ahead and grab your back panel, your front panel, and then your two lining panels and something that has a round bottom. It could be a spool of thread, whatever you'd like. Um, there's no set size for this. You can make this a really big curve. You can make it a really small curve, whatever, whatever floats your boat. I'm just gonna use a spool of thread here and we're going to just line it up so that one edge of the circle lines up with the right edge of the material and then another edge of the circle lines up with the bottom edge of the material so that I can make a nice little rounded, little rounded mark down here. Nothing, nothing crazy, just nice and simple. So I'm gonna do this for both bottom corners of my front, back, and also my two main lining panels with your lining panels, make sure you do the right edges because they're not this, they're not a square. So you can see this is a little too narrow and this is the same size as the front. So that's what I do. I just line it up with one of my exterior panels to see what's the top and the bottom. So this is gonna be the bottom right here. Once you have those little circles marked, you're just gonna trim off the corners of all these panels so that they're nice and rounded. So these are all prepped. Now we're gonna talk about attaching the strap connector hardware if you're not doing the hardware, then you're just gonna make your D-ring tabs and you're gonna attach them to the sides of your bag, just like the pattern suggests. But I do wanna show you how I work with these little strap connectors. So I will be adding these to the back of the bag. Uh, you could add it to the one to the back and one to the front. If you did that, just make sure you don't add them in the same spot, it's easy to do. So if you do that, if you wanna add one to the back, one to the front, you might think, oh, I'll do it like this. But remember, when these end up coming together like that, they're both gonna be on the same side, which is no good. So if you do it on one on the front, one on the back, then they need to both be on either the left or both be on the right. So that way when they come together, they'll be on opposite sides. However, I'm going to just install them both on the back panel. Now, these strap connectors do require screws, they do require some glue, and they can, you know, they're gonna hold the weight of the bag and whatever's in it, they can rip material. So to prevent that, you wanna beef up your material. Now we have a layer of quilt cotton here, and then we have some woven interfacing on it. That's not enough. You can grab some Decoville light, you can grab some fusible fleece, or you can even grab a scrap of heavier material. So I'm gonna use a scrap of my cork material because I've got it to help beef up the installation of this. So I just need to make sure it's big enough for these screws to go through. Okay, I'm gonna get another piece that's bigger. So even if this top panel is cork or vinyl, you still want to beef it up with something else. It is important because it, these screws over time can rip the material, but if you have multiple layers, um, of things, especially that wouldn't rip. I would highly suggest fusible fleece for this. A scrap of fusible fleece would be perfect on the back of this. Um, but that will just make sure that as the weight of the bag pulls on these connectors and it pulls on those screws that are then pulling on the fabric, it's not just depending on this material to keep it in place. So I'm gonna grab my screwdriver set here. And I always like to keep it open and I put my screws in here as I need to because they are so tiny, they are easy to lose. 
So I'm just gonna unscrew my connector because my connector has a front, a back, and two small screws. So the back piece is like a little washer. It looks like this, it's nice and flat. That's what I'm gonna use to mark placement. So I'm gonna grab my small ruler and I'm gonna measure one inch in from the right side and half of an inch up from the bottom edge of my fabric. So not from the bottom edge of the bottom fabric, but just from the bottom edge of the fabric, just like that. You just don't want this to be too high or too low. So then I'm going to line up my washer so that pretty much the very top right corner of my ruler is centered on the circle on the bottom of my washer. Another thing you can do if you wanna make it easier is just mark a dot right where that top corner is. So you know it's one inch over, half of an inch up. There we go, there's a dot there. And then take your washer and center the washer so that the bottom circle, the bottom hole covers that dot and then just kind of eyeball it, make sure it's straight. It, it is very tiny and it will move with the bag. So if it's not perfectly straight, it's not gonna be noticeable. But then put a dot where the top hole is. So now you have two marks, bottom and top for the two holes of our washer. I'm going to also mark those same dots on my scrap piece of material or your fusible fleece or deck of the light, whatever you're using to beef this up. There we go. So now when you look at the front piece of the connector, you can see it has these two little posts that kind of stick up. I like to make sure that those will fit. So I'm gonna use my hole punch here just to kind of match up the size of my cut so that it's about the same size as that. There we go. If it's too small of a hole that you punch in your material, these posts won't fit through it and that's the goal. The goal is to have these posts fit through the hole in the fabric and also fit through the hole in whatever piece of stabilizer you're using. So I'm just gonna take my hole punch, center it over my marks, and punch a hole in my material. And then I'm also gonna punch the holes in my stabilizer. So I'm gonna take my front connector and from the right side of the back panel, I'm gonna push those, those posts through the hole. And if you find that the hole is too small, you can always make it a little bit bigger. There we go. And once I know it fits, I'm gonna actually add a little bit of glue to the front of this. I love using glue on this. So I'm just gonna add a dot of glue right between the two posts on my front of my strap connector, just like that. Now I'm once again going to insert this so that the posts go through the holes. I'm just kind of push it down. Now this is a little big, so I'm gonna trim it down. So now take your piece of stabilizer and insert it on the wrong side of your back panel and just kind of press it over the posts. So you can add glue to this material as well if you'd like or you can just, just kind of trust it. So now take the back panel and lay it over those holes, lining them up. And I'm just gonna do one at a time. So I'm gonna grab one screw and I'm gonna insert it through the back panel and through the hole. And I'm going to screw it in most of the way, but I'm not gonna tighten it. I'm just gonna make it so it stops lightly and I'm gonna leave it there. Cause right now I just wanna make sure everything is the way I want it before I glue these in. Same with the top screw, just lightly kind of put it in there. There we go. So now let's look at the front, make sure it's not upside down or anything, make sure it's not all wonky. There we go. Can you see? That is a beautiful, beautiful little look. It looks so fancy, but it's actually not that much work. So now before I'm done done, I like to put some glue in these holes. So I'm gonna remove one screw, always putting it back in my little keeper over here. And I'm gonna take a little bit of glue and I'm just gonna put a dot of glue right in that hole. And it's okay if it's a little messy. And then I'm gonna grab my screw and I'm gonna screw it back in with the glue in there. And I'm gonna tighten it all the way now. There we go. And I'm gonna repeat that for the top screw. So that's installed just like that. So we're just gonna do the same thing on the right side. So I'll just show you how to mark it and then I'll install it off camera. But once again, one inch in from the side and then half of an inch up from the bottom edge of the fabric. So from the bottom of the fold of the fabric and then just mark a dot right at the corner of your ruler. It's gonna be easier than trying to hold the washer in place. And then remove the screws from your other connector and make sure that they are somewhere safe. And then grab the washer and make sure it's triangle side down, flat side up. Lay the bottom hole so it's centered over that dot. Try to line it up so it's straight. And then just mark a dot right in the top hole. 
and then just install this connector the same way you did with the other one. Okay, so now it's just time to assemble the bag. So what we wanna do first is grab our zipper that goes on the top. This is the one with those adorable little tabs and we're gonna fold it in half and we're gonna mark the midpoint. So I'm just gonna mark it with an air racing marker. And whatever marking tool you're using, just make sure it stays in the seam allowance just in case. So, cause this is white zipper tape. So I have my midpoint marked on both sides of that. And now I'm gonna find the midpoint along the top edge of my front panel by just folding it in half. And you can mark it again with a marking tool or you can grab some scissors and just cut a teeny tiny triangle. And now take your front panel and lay it right side up. Grab your zipper and when the zipper closes, it should go towards the left, just like that. So all the zippers when closing all go towards the left. And then take that top zipper and lay it right side down against the right side of your top panel. Line up the midpoint marks first and clip those together and then clip out along the edges. The top zipper does not extend all the way to the edge of the bag, it's not supposed to. It is shorter than the top edge of the bag. Now we're gonna baste along this clipped edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. All right, and you can see we didn't do anything to the lining panels. If you're feeling the zippers and you wanna add a zipper pocket in the lining panel, go for it. A slip pocket, mesh pocket, you can have a lot of fun with that. So you can make this as an elaborate of a bag as you want it to be, or you can do what I'm doing and just keep it super simple. So now take your front panel, lay it right side up, the zipper is facing down. Grab a lining panel and lay that right side down over the front panel with the zipper sandwiched in between and just line up the top edge exactly. The top edges should be the same size. And we're just gonna clip these together and now let's sew along the clipped edge at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Once these are sewn together, press them back. So I like to just kind of finger press the lining like that and then flip the zipper up and pull the lining and the front panel wrong sides together and then just work to straighten this out. You might find this easiest to use an iron and get it nice and flat or you can use your fingers or you can use a pressing tool. Just make this easy. This should be an easy bag. So now we're going to top stitch along this whole edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. It's adorable, isn't it? I know, it's adorable. Okay, we're gonna attach the back panel the same way. So grab your exterior and lining back panels. With the back panel, if you have this hardware, uh, you're gonna wanna be careful and make sure these stay down. And if you have the D-rings on the side, you also wanna make sure that as we sew the bag over there, the D-rings stay in. So whatever hardware you have, if you can move anything, it needs to be towards the center of the bag. So I'm going to mark the midpoint along the top edge of my back panel, just like I did with the front panel. There we go. So I'm gonna take my back panel and lay it right side up, just like that, my little straps are going down. And then I'm gonna take my front panel with the zipper and lay it right side down over that. It's easier if I can close the zipper to do this. And then match up the midpoint marks on the zipper tape in the top of the back panel and clip together, right sides together. Once again, the zipper tape does not go all the way to the sides of the back panel. There's a good gap there. And now let's baste along this clipped edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. Once you have it basted, grab your remaining lining panel and lay it right side down along the back of your zipper and line it up with that sewn edge. And now let's go sew along this clipped edge at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Once again, if you need to lift up that back panel to make it kind of go at a 90 degree angle and that's gonna make it easier for you to sew close to those strap connectors without fighting it with your presser foot. Now flip the lining panel up. I like to just finger press it real quick and then flip the lining panel and back panel so that they are wrong sides together. I find it easier if I zip up that zipper and just flatten it out. Once again, grab an iron if that's easiest for you. Otherwise, use your fingers or a pressing tool to press this seam really nicely. And now let's top stitch right along this edge by the zipper at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Alrighty, it's already looking so pretty, isn't it? I love this. It's a, I feel like it's a very wintry, but also going into spring look. I like it. I like it a lot. Okay, so now we just have to sew it together. So take the two exterior pieces and pull them up right sides together. Take the two lining pieces and fold them right sides together, just like that. So let's start with where they meet up by the zipper. I'm folding the seam down towards the exterior side because that's just where it wants to go. 
I'm going to clip this together. So I always match up the seam first because that's really where you want to make sure everything lines up right at that seam. I'm just going to clip together and then I'm just going to match up the sides and the bottoms. You'll notice when you do this that you have three zippers, two on the front, one on the back, and that they kind of like hug in with one another. None of these zippers are right next to each other. The back zipper lines up right along the middle between the two front zippers. That makes sewing this together a lot easier. When you have when you have the front and the back zipper all lining up together, that's pretty tricky. But this way we got lots of zippers, but it's still easy to sew together. So you have, once you have the exterior clipped together, do the same for the lining. Okay, on the lining side, you're gonna wanna leave about a four inch opening. So just make sure you measure that. It should be centered on the bottom of the lining. So now we're gonna go sew this together. On the lining side, we're gonna start by one of our marks and we're gonna sew at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. As we go up the edge towards the zippers, we're gonna decrease it to a quarter inch seam allowance and we're gonna sew right next to the tab at a quarter inch seam allowance. You're gonna to wanna to use the zipper foot when you do this because as we sew next to these zipper tabs, we wanna get close to them, but we do not want to sew on these zipper tabs. It'll break your needle if you tried. So just get close to them, but not on them. If that means you can't get to a quarter inch seam allowance, it's just under that, that's okay. But go quarter inch here, quarter inch around the entire exterior, quarter inch on the other side of the zipper. If you haven't already, make sure that that zipper, that main zipper on the top, the zipper is actually in the center of the bag. It's not anywhere near the sides over here. Once you get back to the lining side, you can increase your seam allowance to 5 eighths of an inch, go all the way around the corner and then stop at this other mark. Make sure at the beginning and the end of this, you do backstitch well and do not sew between them on this bottom edge. So after it's all sewn together, I like to just make sure I caught the edges really well. Now on the lining, I'm going to trim the seam allowance down because it is pretty big, but I'm not going to trim the seam allowance where the opening is. You see how I just cut into it like that and I'll cut into the other side and then just cut along the lining. We just don't need that extra bulk. So I'm just going to trim that off for the exterior. You can trim it down a bit too. Don't trim it too much around the corners because you don't want it to split. But then what I'm gonna do is just cut little nicks right into the cork so it can spread out a little bit more. They don't have to be significant. Just little tiny nicks like that to help it spread. Now reach in through that opening and turn the whole bag out so it's right side out. All right, once it's turned out, reach in and poke out the bottom corners, you shouldn't need any sort of special tool for this. You should be able to just use your fingers. And then for the zipper tabs, I just like to reach in underneath the zipper like this and just kind of pop it up like that. There we go. So I would say interfacing the lining worked out fine. I mean, these, these bits right here, these corners up here, they are a little bit more bulky. Um, if you don't interface the lining, it is a little bit more crisp of a, of like, of a corner right here at the top, but I think it still looks, it still looks really good. All right, so now pull out the lining. And I like to just poke out the corners of the lining as well. I find it just makes it a little bit easier. Now what we're gonna do is just put our fingers into the corners of the opening and just tug a little bit. And you should see the raw edges of the fabric kind of hide down inside the bag. We wanna fold the raw edges in. So we just have a clean folded edge right along that opening and then use some clips to close it. And now we can just top stitch right along this clipped bit at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And then you might want to give it a little press to flatten it all out, but that is looking so cute, isn't it? Oh, I love this bag. Okay, now all we have to do is build the strap. So grab your webbing, your two swivels, and your slider. And what I like to do right off the bat is just clean up the edge of the webbing. So I'll just trim that down like that and then grab a lighter and melt it really well. So that way all those little plasticky fibers melt in on itself. Now we're gonna take one end of the webbing and we're going to take our slider and take your slider so it's right side up. Take the webbing and insert it from the bottom up one side and then wrap that short little edge over the slider to the other side. Now you can use rivets here if you'd like. Uh, if you use rivets, I would suggest folding the short raw edge under and pulling it through. 
about three quarters of an inch or so and then riveting through the three layers so that it's folded under like that. Sewing, I mean, you can still do that for sewing. It's just a little bit trickier, but we can try. For sewing, you wanna pull it about an inch over. Um, and then again, I have the raw edge tucked underneath and I'm just gonna sew just a, the tiniest little rectangle. I'm trying to hold all three of these layers together. If you find it's too difficult to sew the three layers, just sewing it like this so that the raw edge is still exposed, that works too. Okay, once you have that sewn in place, go ahead and clean up the other end of your webbing if you need to. And now take your webbing so that the swivel is faced like this and the folded over edge is up facing towards you and just keep your webbing nice and straight as you pull along all the way to the edge. Take one of your swivel hooks and align it so that the clasp, the swivel part is facing down and then just slide it on. Again, the goal here is to keep everything as straight as possible. Now, keeping your webbing straight, we're gonna fold it over to meet our slider and we're going to insert it on the side where the fold over is. So up one side of the slider, give it some slack and then over the other and pull it through. Now, just double check everything. When you pull on your swivel, it should fold like this and the swivel's facing out. The slider is facing up like this. The folded edge is tucked in between the two long straps and then you have the end over here. Take your remaining swivel and put it up so that it's facing the right side, the top of the strap and fold over this bottom raw bit. And you can fold it over just once and sew it or rivet it, or you can fold it over twice and sew it or rivet it. So I'm just gonna fold it over twice like that. So I'm sewing through all three layers and I'm just gonna make a teeny tiny little square just like I did with the slider. Oh yeah, look how cute that is. Such a fun little bag. I hope you guys love it, I really do. So if you make this bag, I wanna know, did you do D-rings or did you do the tabs? Or did you do the D-rings on the top? I've seen a lot of people do that as well. Uh, no matter where you put it, just make sure you beef up the material a little bit more because you don't want it to rip out. Even if you're using like a cork or a vinyl up here, I would still add some sort of interfacing or extra material on the back just like we did with these over here just to make sure this doesn't rip at anything because the hardware is beautiful, but again, if you're putting a lot of stuff in this, because even though it's small, it's mighty and you know we can fill this up and make it heavy and you just don't want to risk any of these ripping out of your material. I personally love this bag. I think it's so cute. I love how easy and quick it is to make. This is definitely the type of bag, if I had to make 20 of them for a group of people for some reason, I could definitely do that over a weekend and I wouldn't feel too overwhelmed by it. You know, it's just, I could kind of like line them all up and just bing, 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 get them all out real quickly. Um, and it's fun to like play with different material. You know, I have so many ideas of different vinyls and corks I want to use and different quilt cottons. I love that. I love when we can, we can use the quilt cotton on the exterior with our vinyl. I love that. It just makes me really happy. <laughs> so I hope you love making the zippy as much as I do. Thank you as always to Sally Tomato for allowing me to use your patterns in my channel. I hope you're having a great day. Have a fantastic rest of your week. Get out there and make something. Bye guys. <laughs>